In this slide, we'll understand the long run average cost curve in detail. Again here, we have various short run average cost curves, seven of them actually. And in the same fashion, we've drawn the long run average cost curves. It's just that we've not shown the tangency here for a better presentation. But please note that the long run average cost curve is always tangent to all the short run average cost curves. It might be tangent at any point, not necessarily the lowest point, but it will be tangent to all the short run average cost curves. It will be touching all the short run average cost curves. Now in this case, we can see that there is a long run average cost curves formed with the help of various short run average cost curves. Initially, you can see that the long run average cost curve is also U-shaped just like the short run average cost curve. It is also with the shape of U wherein initially the curve is falling, later on it becomes steady and finally it tends to rise. So when the curve is going down, when the curve is falling, there's a downward slope in the curve, we tend to say that the firm is enjoying the economies of scale. That means when the firm is increasing the level of output, the cost per unit is going down. So it is enjoying the economies of scale. In other words, it is enjoying the increasing returns to scale. Since it is enjoying the increasing returns to scale, the cost per unit is going down and this is the reason why the curve is falling. After a particular point, the curve becomes steady. It kind of becomes constant from this point to this point here. It is more or less constant. So we can say that the firm is in the stage of constant returns to scale. Here, when the production is increased, more factors of production are employed. The cost does not increase by much. The production increases in relation to increase in the production factors, in relation to the increase in the cost of production factors. So both kind of set off each other. So the firm is enjoying the constant returns to scale. And finally, we see that the curve tends to rise beyond this point. And when it is rising, this means that the cost per unit is also rising because this is the average cost curve. So when it is rising, it means that the cost per unit is rising beyond this point. And when this is the case, we say that the firm is into a state wherein it is having diseconomies of scale or it is in a stage of decreasing returns to scale, which means it is producing beyond what it actually should. Ideally, the firm should not go beyond this point. The firm should not go beyond OA level of production because after this point, you can see that the curve is rising, which means the cost of production is also rising. So from here to here, we can say that the firm is into the diseconomies of scale. It has gone beyond its capacity. It is producing more than what it can control. It is producing more than what it can manage. And thus, it is getting decreasing returns to scale. And this is the reason why this curve is called the planning curve. A firm 
can plan as to how it has to expand how it has to shift from one short run curve to the other in what way what are the factors of production that need to be changed whether the more capital needs to be introduced introduce more labor needs to be employed more machinery needs to be bought more land needs to be bought whatever the case may be the firm has to plan all this and it can be planned with the help of these short run curves taken together and a long run average cost curve running through all these short run average cost curves but for this the firm also needs to project it also needs to predict as to what is the amount of output what is the quantity of production it might be able to sell in future so keeping in mind how much the firm needs to produce and how it will produce that much how it will change its production facilities or factory with the help of these curves the firm can decide all these things the firm can also decide as to how much it should produce and where it should stop what is the level of production beyond which it should not go this is how long run average cost curve helps the firm to plan its expansion process just a point to note the long run average cost curve is also called as the envelope curve because it envelops all the short run average cost curves it covers all the short run average cost curves and this is the reason why it is called the envelope curve so we've already done this short run curve is called the planned curve the long run curve is called the planning curve or the envelope curve now we've seen that the average cost curves both in the long run and the short run are u shaped but they get this u shape because of the assumption that technology remains constant only when we assume that technology remains constant do we get this u shape if the firm shifts to a better technology if the firm adopts a it 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 adopts an upgraded technology then what will happen to this long run average cost curve how will it look let's see the long run average cost curve will be l shaped now why will it be l shaped it is because when the firm shifts to a better technology the cost of production will fall steeply the cost of production will come down sharply and then after a point it will settle there it will go on reducing not by much but it will go on reducing and this gives this curve the l shape because of switching of technology because of upgrading of technology the cost per unit comes down sharply and then after some time it settles there this gives this curve the l shape